Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and welcome to Knife AQ number two. It's the series where I answer all your frequently asked questions about knives, be they big or small, I've got an answer for you. Now thanks to everyone who left your questions on the bottom of our number one Knife AQ. We're going to start peppering those questions into this and the upcoming ones. And if you have a question you want answered yourself, make sure to leave it in the comments section below. Well, let's get into the questions we've got for today. All right, so last week we did a video on, uh, on modern slip joints and modern non-locking knives. Uh, we also debuted our uh, new Knife Center exclusive Victorinox Farmer X Swiss Army Knife. As such, there was a lot of, uh, a lot of Swiss Army Knife talk on the channel last week. Uh, so with that in mind, I'm going to get to our first question, which comes from in region Kaikorubum, something like that. He says, you dare to say that the latest SAK is not the latest and greatest. I demand satisfaction, sir. Okay. <laughs> he says, I own a variety of knives, some legal EDC and some not, but of them all, the most acceptable, useful, and least threatening is in this unfortunate age is a Swiss Army knife. Blah, 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 blah. Um, I agree with you. <laughs> um, just because I, I said that uh, Swiss Army knives aren't like the latest and greatest doesn't mean I don't like them. Uh, in fact, I actually carry a Swiss Army knife every day, and this is my EDC Swiss Army knife, a Wenger, sorry, Victorinox Evo Grip S18. I used to use a, a Wenger S16, uh, but they don't make the Victorinox version of that knife anymore since they consolidated the brands. Uh, and I upgraded to this because I wanted to put a, uh, a special uh, Firefly uh, Ferrocerium rod in there uh, to carry. But uh, anyway. I love a Swiss Army knife. I'm always kind of a two-tool guy. I always have my one-hand opening folder uh, and a Swiss Army knife or some kind of multi-tool, but usually a Swiss Army knife uh, at my other side. So I hope that satisfies you for your demand of satisfaction, sir. All right, so our next Swiss Army related comment comes from Brick Balloon. He says, if Victorinox made a Cadet X, it would literally sell out in a day. Having a set of 84 millimeter scissors is something so many Swiss Army knife collectors want. I also agree with you, sir. Um, as I mentioned, I'm a, a two-tool guy. I've got my primary and I've got my Swiss Army knife. Uh, for gentlemen's carry these days, the Cadet is absolutely the way I go. I have for uh, several years. Usually these days I pair it with my small Sebenza with Bacote inlays. Uh, sometime my Ziba, sometimes my Ziba MS3, however. Um, but strangely enough, one of the things I use my S18 for the most is uh, personal grooming. I shouldn't say the most, but often enough. Um, you've got the, uh, the nail file on there, uh, so you can you know, clean up your nails, that sort of thing. Uh, of course, you've got the toothpick and tweezers. On top of that, I usually keep the blade sharp enough to shave with if I need to uh, touch up a little spot. And the scissors also work for that if I have like a loose mustache hair. And it also works well, they also work well to trim your fingernails. Uh, maybe a bit barbaric, I know, but the Swiss Army manicure for me is never far away. Um, the cadet has everything I need to take care of that except for that pair of scissors. Uh, so I agree with you there too. If they, if they made a cadet X, I'd probably buy a half dozen on day one myself. Let's uh, maybe uh, send them some messages on Instagram or something. Put the bug in there because I would love to see it as well. All right, and finally from Mr. Bob Wabwa. Yes, that is what his name is on, uh, on YouTube. He says, all non-serrated versions of the Trekker have been discontinued. What a shame. You're sensing a pattern here. I also agree with you. Um, we made a, a best of Swiss Army knife video and we showed a non serrated trekker, uh, but unfortunately, they uh, non serrated one hand trekker, but unfortunately, they have discontinued it since then. Uh, so the only ones available now have the partial serrations out near the front. Um, I don't like that personally. I like the, uh, the, the plain edge most of all, but I've actually since moved on uh, from my large Swiss Army knife preferences from the one hand trekkers. Uh, when I'm heading outdoors camping, my my two tool solution, I've got my fixed blade and I have an outrider on the other side of my belt when I head out. It's the same size as the Trekker. Now you don't get the one hand opening blade, uh, but for me I like the lines of the, uh, the blade without that one hand opening hump there a little more and I find the lock here on the side easier to disengage one handed than the sort of left hand biased liner lock that the Trekker series comes, for, comes with. Um, of course, you've also got the nice Victorinox wood saw, works very well. And the reason I like the Outrider over something like the Rucksack is you get one extra layer. It does have a, uh, a small Phillips head screwdriver there, but more importantly, 
a nice pair of scissors, and as you probably guessed from my previous two tools, I like having that pair of scissors with me. Even if it's not an EDC tool, I like the precision that you can get uh, with that tool. So there you go. If you're, if you're jonesing over a, a plain edge one hand trekker, uh, maybe take a look at some of the other uh, non one hand opening versions that can still be had with a, a full plain edge. They might, uh, they might fit the bill for what you're looking for. All right, next up uh, is actually our first proper question for the day. Uh, comes from Logan Williams. He says, you know what I really miss? My old buck Red Point Rescue. It was my go-to folder for my first aid kit. My dog chewed up the rubber. Now I can't find one out there at all. Uh, that's true, the Red Point Rescue I don't think is available anymore. There's the standard version of the Red Point, uh, but you lose some, uh, some extra functionality on that version. Uh, Logan says, I've been trying to find recommendations for one like it, i.e. rubber handle and easy one hand opening, preferably serrations. Uh, but no one seems to be able to think of any. Um, I will point you to a video we did on rescue folders. Uh, it has a bunch of suggestions in it. Suggestions in it. We'll leave a link to that. Uh, my initial reaction would be check out the new SOG Trident AT. Uh, it doesn't have a rubber handle, but it is synthetic and it's got a good amount of grip. Um, instead of that uh, kind of tacky rubber, you've got a orange peel coating here, or an orange peel texture that gives you some pretty good retention. You do have some serrations there. And it's definitely easy one hand opening because you've got uh, SOG's XR lock, which is ambidextrous and it is assisted. So it pops right open. Uh, in addition to that, glass breaker on the front and the, uh, the edge of the blade itself is exposed here in this cutout so you can use it as a strap cutter. Um, pretty cool knife, I do say so myself. Um, I, I like it a lot. I don't know if this is gonna hit exactly what you're looking for. So I'm actually gonna throw this question to the comment section. Um, check out that video below, uh, that we leave a link to, check out this knife, and check out the suggestions that I'm sure are going to come in for you in the comments below. And our next question comes from uh, Open Yin, someone in Russia. Um, I don't speak Cyrillic or Russian, or I don't read Cyrillic, uh, so bear with me there. He says, hi, I have a dilemma about two knives to buy, an Ontario Rat 2 and Aus 8, or a Spyderco Ambitious, which knife will be better, which one should I buy? Uh, all right, I've got both of those knives right here to take a look at. Uh, it's kind of an interesting comparison. Uh, the blade length on the Ambitious is a little shorter um, compared to the Ontario, but I would say the Ontario Rat 2 is probably the better bargain, coming in at about 32 bucks, while the Ambitious is going to be definitely a bit nicer, coming in about 44 bucks right now. Just you know, you know that does sound kind of weird. You're going to pay a little bit more money for less blade. Uh, and the steels are virtually identical. The 8CR13 MOV on the Spyderco uh, is virtually the same as the Aus 8 on the Ontario. So no real difference in uh, makeup there. Uh, but that extra money goes to one fit and finish and two G10 rather than uh, synthetic handles on the Ontario. Now both blades come in under three inches, uh, the under two and a half on that uh, Spyderco actually. Both have good geometry, both have decent performance out of the steel. I'll say if you're going for outright performance, uh, if that's your, uh, your key consideration here, you want the most performance you can get uh, between the two, go for the Ontario because you do have more edge. You've got more usable handle length as well. Um, both in a standard grip are about a three and a half finger uh, grip for me here, but you do have some space around the pivot on the Ontario where you can choke up and get a meatier grip if you really need to power through something. But if you're fine with a little less edge length and you want uh, the more premium feeling knife, definitely go with the Ambitious. It's just put together a little bit better. Uh, four position pocket clip and liner lock, just like the Ontario. But again, G10, it's finished a little bit better. It's more precise. It's gonna feel like a more expensive knife because uh, it is a little bit, but it's just gonna be that much more satisfying to use day to day. If you wanna check out a little bit more uh, comparison between the two, we actually did a comparison video between uh, the big brothers of both of these knives, the Spyderco Tenacious versus the Ontario Rat 1. And apart from the dimensions, uh, that video kind of lays out the differences between the two pretty well, so we'll leave a link to that also. All right, our next question comes from Tim Long. He's got a question about some of the new Benchmade Hunt fixed blades. He says he's wondering if the old Hidden Canyon with the Scout sheath is compatible with the new uh, traditional verti vertical carry leather sheath. I'm assuming you're saying, uh, is it compatible with that knife, uh, it, rather than the sheath being compatible with the sheath. Um, he's asking if the knife is the same size. Um, roughly, yes. Um, they did make a few uh, changes in terms of the handle. You don't have that uh, prominent finger groove here. Um, if it's one of the old leather uh, Scout style sheaths, I would say probably. Uh, they did go a little bit thinner overall, mostly down to the blade stock here. 
Uh, and for that reason, I don't think it'll fit the old Scout versions of uh, Kydex sheath that they offered with the G10 version of the Hidden Canyon. Um, so I can't confirm. I wish I had one of the old style sheaths around to test fit for you. Uh, but if it's a leather one, I would say probably. Um, if you want one of the new versions with Scout style carry, if you can of course get a custom sheath made or go with the, uh, the upgraded version of the Hidden Canyon that has S90V as well as rich light handle scales that does come with a Kydex sheath. Uh, you are gonna need to supply a, uh, a tech lock uh, onto this if you wanna carry it on your belt because they actually don't include some belt carry hardware there. Um, if anyone knows in the comments, if these can confirm whether these fit the old style Scout, Scout carry sheaths, would love to hear it. All right, now we've got a couple comments uh, relating to uh, last week I talked about sharpening a convex geometry knife, uh, specifically a Felicneven or a Bark River. Um, first comment comes from Brent Jacobs. He says, I think a belt sharpener like the Ken Onion also creates a convex uh, when used, or in that case, won't mess one up. Um, yes, technically that is correct. The, uh, the Ken Onion sharpener or any of the WorkSharp belt based sharpeners do create a convex edge, but they are creating a secondary uh, convex edge at the edge of the knife. Uh, one thing to keep in mind with the Bark Rivers and the Felk and even specifically is their convex comes right to a point. And if you take that to a whetstone or one of these belt based systems, it's going to be coming in at a slightly, uh, slightly broader angle and you will be putting a secondary edge on the knife. Will it still be usable? Absolutely. Uh, and it may even be easier to sharpen in the long run if that's what you're after. But if you're looking to maintain that same kind of apple seed right to zero edge, you're not going to want to use uh, the Ken Onion. You're not going to want to use a whetstone. All right, next comment, same, uh, same subject, comes from a, uh, a frequent commenter of ours, Randy Clendenin. How are you, sir? Uh, it says, hello, DCA, DCA. Thanks for the info on convex edge sharpening. Um, I think that WorkSharp has come out with a pocket concave sharpener, convex I think he means. Uh, is it a good choice? Uh, I've got that right here. I think you're talking about one of the new pivot sharpeners and it's a carbide style pull through sharpener that does produce a convex edge. Uh, but the same comments uh, that I mentioned about the WorkSharp uh, can onion apply here. It would be putting a secondary bevel on that convex geometry knife. So. It will still hold an edge, it'll still put an edge on it and make things sharp, but you will be altering that, uh, that geometry. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, and as for me personally, I'm not a huge fan of carbide sharpeners. They're definitely field expedient, uh, but I'd much rather carry a, uh, a, a portable strop. Uh, we've got some stuff from Flex Strops, uh, the, uh, the Benchmade, uh, and actually some small WorkSharp things too you could check out. We'll leave links to some of those in our description. All right, last but not least this week, we have a question from DJ Hamburgla. Great name, by the way. Uh, it says, I have a question. Good, you've come to the right place. What the heck is the knife center symbol? It looks like a fan blade. What does it represent? Uh, so if you look real closely at our logo, we do kind of refer to it as a fan, the fan here internally, but each spoke of that fan is actually a stylized uh, chef's knife. Uh, so you've got kind of that rotating chef knife pattern. Uh, so that, that's what it is. It's, uh, we got a lot of knives here, so we got a lot of knives in our logo too. And for folks out there who have commented before that our logo uh, looks like the Walmart logo, I will say we had our logo before Walmart had their logo. So they stole it from us, just so you know. All right, guys, that's all the questions I'm going to answer this week. Thanks for everyone who's been leaving your questions below uh, for the next one. Make sure to get those in here and maybe we'll be able to feature them in a future Knife AQ. In the meantime, make sure to let us know what you thought of uh, what I presented to you today. And if you want to get your hands on any of these knives, we will leave links in the description to take you over to KnifeCenter.com. As I always say, make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program while you're there, because if you're going to buy one of these cool knives, you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and leave your questions below. See you next time.